Well, amen. Let's get started here. Let's, this is good. Lord, we thank you today. Thank you for the beauty of what you're doing. Lord, may this be concise. Make it, make it understandable. Make it something that we can really apply to our lives. Lord, help us to really grow and flow in this. We just give you all sorts of praise and glory for it. Lord, we thank you so much for all the beautiful things you've done. Help us today to help me to make this make sense, to, to present this correctly, Lord, as we grow and further in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today, we're going to be talking about, we're still talking about the energy fields, the surrounding force, the power that is around us, to us, around us, in us, through us, powerful stuff. Today, we're going to be looking at the dark side of the force. How fun. How fun is that? We've been looking at the energase. Uh, Greek word from an, it means in, and ergon, which is to toil. Get that. It's the inner working. Literally what works inside you, the energy force that is functioning around us. It's the things that energize us, that influences us, and the things that we let work actually cause an effect in us and around us. Okay. One of the best ways we've gotten to understand this is the dominion that you submit to because dominion is this power that runs us, affects us, what's around us. Whatever dominion we submit to is an energy field that affects us in every way. It's an energy, a field of energy that we allow to be in us, to be working. It radiates and transmits its own set of frequencies. It goes out. It's one of the effects is it has sympathetic frequencies. It has all sorts of other ways of working together. It's just really, really phenomenal what we've been looking at. But we need to start seeing these energy fields. We need to start seeing them. You know, we have um, our body has our our five senses that are working and how that we have seen how the into of what things we go into affects us and how we can feel those and see those in the energy field but it also found out this stuff comes out of us it affects us it affects others around us <coughs> it's what we are doing in our body and affecting that also it's just really too cool our soul has its own set of senses into and out of and our spirit has its own set of senses into and out of Okay. We've been doing these things, knowing these three realms and walking within them for a long time. But the question comes out, we know that this is both positive and negative. Both positive and negative. Now, does that mean we have 30 senses? Hmm, or is it just our choice of usage? Well, I believe it's just the choice of our usage, but it is such a strong difference between the positive and the negative realms okay um, we have the positive and negative in the in the physical even we can see how things are positively supposed to work negatively supposed to work cancer is a negative function of what happens in the physical realm growth and love and life is a positive okay you can see how this is working well it's the same thing in the in the soul realm soul realm things can go really beautifully and an excellent growth or it can go really sad and get bondage and perversions and all these other things can the corruption be made permanent uh, just very possibly okay um, can there ever be a point where we can not, where we can't be healed of it? And I'm leaning towards that everything can be healed, just the chances of us because of what our choices are that it won't be. Okay? Um, we know that even in the spirit realm, the positive and the negative, okay, can we be set free from all the stuff that happens in the negative spirit realm? Yes, we can. Okay? Can senses be redeemed? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Okay. I didn't say it was easy. I didn't say something you can just wave a magic wand on, go poof, and it's better. No, but it can be. But we have to really work at it. We have to do the things that are there. Now, not religious working. No, no, no. Just the work. It's going to take effort. It's going to take energy to do. So, walk into a negative energy field. Okay, you walk into a field, <clears throat> what's going to happen? Well, that is a field of energy. It affects you. It influences you. It's a dominion that rules and does things and it causes an effect. It's inside you. It's a submitting to an authority. 
really amazing what we get. And there's a bit positive and negative, but it affects us and it causes us to be different. What comes in goes out of. Just that simple. Maybe hidden from sight, maybe something people can't see, doesn't mean it's not working. It's working in us and it's about us, maybe hidden from sight. This is what we're trying to do, is trying to gain the discernment of sight so we can see it. That would be cool, that's amazing. But just because we can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't have energy. It still has energy, still has power. Both positive or negative, okay, it is there. And these are the influences and the things that we are working with and dealing with in our lives today. Ephesians 4.16 says, For whom all the body, having been fitted and compacted together through every assisting bond, according to the effectual working of one major in each part, produces the growth of the body into the building up of itself in love. According to the effectual working. What is that? It's the energizing. That's the energase. According to the energizing of one major in each part. We need, we all need to energize who we are. We need to have the Holy Spirit working in us to make each one of us the person that we're supposed to be, that we can be, and then the body of Christ will be together and built up in love. But each one has to be energized to the max. That's what we need. And the differences come together to make a whole to make this whole thing work together. Love energized into the maturity of the body. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. Then in 2 Corinthians we saw this. We says, but if we are troubled, it is for your comfort and salvation being worked out in the endurance of the same sufferings. That is the word energase. For being energized in the, in the endurance of the same sufferings for which we also suffer. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort and salvation doing what is necessary for the effect in other people. Energized, endurance to be able to handle and stay under. Um, that's the hupomene, the, the patience, being able to stay under, stay under. Be able to handle suffering until others are benefited. This is a spirit realm function to endure physical realm problems. Okay, You've got to see it that way. If you're going through things You've got to bring things of the spirit realm into it. You will be able to handle it, be able to change things, be able to endure if you can see the things in the spirit realm knowing that it's in Jesus Christ, knowing that He is there with you, knowing faith in Him is going to change everything. In Colossians chapter 1 we saw, To whom God willed to make known what are the riches of this mystery among the nations who is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we announce, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man full grown in Christ Jesus, for which I also labor, struggling according to the energizing of him who energizes in me in power. And this, is, this is all fascinating. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ himself in you, energizing who he is, which energizes you in power. Wow! Full grown in Christ. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to mature every Christian. And it is our immaturity levels that keep us from the power of the energy that we should have. That's amazing. That is absolutely stunning. The mystery of the ages is Christ in you, the anointed one, the hope of glory, the energy of God himself in you. We always feel like, is, is, where's Jesus? He, he's never around. No, he's around. He is right there. He is totally, always with you. Always, totally in you. Okay? It's you that loses the ability to see him because of your selfishness, because of your walking in flesh. We are going to get this. It is the hope until everyone is mature and fully grown. That's what we want. Okay? Each person needing to grow up so that everyone struggles with the energy that is working in them, the energy that, that they have. They all struggle to make it work right. Now, Paul struggled with that. Okay, He really did. He said he did have a grip on it. He said he was still working on it. Okay, He knew that he was going to press on towards the mark of the prize. He didn't have a full grip, but he says, this is one thing I do. I press on. Forgetting what's behind, I press on. Why? He knew that he had to continually put himself under the energy of the Spirit of God.
to get it working right. We all need to grow in the use of the energy of God. We need to grow in this. How does it work? What's it function? How do I know it's there? We have to gain the revelation knowledge of it. The working of energy is all around us. And it is in us. If we don't know about it, how can we grow in it? That's a very important question. If we don't know that it's there, how can we get better at it? We must open our eyes to the existence of the energy of God, the energy of things that are around, is around us and how He's working in us. We must see it working around us. We must learn to function in its use because we are dying from lack of knowledge. There must be victory in these areas for this time. Oh, Lord. Open our eyes. Open our discernment that we can see what is happening around us. We are not helpless. We, we are not hopeless. We are empowered. We have everything for life and godliness, the Bible says. It's time to see it. It's time to believe it. It's time to start to use it. Amen. Now as from last week. A little review. Well, now we get to jump in. This is where it gets crazy. We're going to start a whole new level of this today. The energase is the Greek word. We get our word energy from it. Okay, energy. What is it? So we have three areas of study. We're studying God's energy force, who He is and what He does, and we hit that pretty heavy. But then we have our energy force, or how He is using it in us. Okay, what He is doing in us. We've been touching that one. The effect of it and its use. And that's what we've we really been doing the last couple weeks. Our third area of study is negative energy. What? Now well, here we go. The problem and the solution. We're going to be hitting this today. The negative. Because we live in a fallen world. Okay? Adam was created into a fallen world. The world was already fallen. And then he was given authority to conquer it and subdue it. Adam, here it is. The whole thing is there. God made it so that he was able to handle and subdue and work on these things. Instead, he submitted to its authority. He submitted and succumbed to it. And what happened when he did that? Well, mankind all fell into sin and death. All of us. We all chose it. It will be that way until God destroys the earth. It is here. There's sin on the planet and man is fallen. But the Redeemer came. Wow. And He brought salvation to anyone who wanted it. And He says, now, you might have had sin. You might have been under all that. But I'm putting within you my spirit. And... You are redeemed. You are changed. You are a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. The fallen and the redeemed now live together on this planet. Now, the fallen doesn't like the redeemed very much. And the redeemed needs to love the fallen more. We are now, who we are, is what God intended in creation. He intended to have a man that had full fellowship with him and we have the Holy Spirit living within us in our spirit. Amazing. We are able to have everything that God intended we are able to. We have a few problems. We don't get it all together. Okay. We are now what God intended but we still have sin. Now that's a problem. Okay. <laughs> We have to apply the redemption to see it working. We have to work at this thing. We have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We've been going over this for how many years? Okay, is understanding that there are things that we have got to accomplish. This, all this is true in our spirits. But we are glorious in our spirits. But we've got to make it become true in our souls. We have got to work this out. Now, it's not a work we do, but it's a work we do. It's not a religion we do, but it is something that we participate in. Okay. We are still affected by the fallen world systems. Boy, that is true. But we have been equipped to deal with it. We've been equipped to have a much more effect on the things around us. Now, let's go into my, the old spirit, soul, and body chart. Does this look familiar? Yeah, some of you got this. We have a spirit, our souls, our mind, our will, and our emotions. We have a body, okay? Absolutely straight. Our choice of our will is that we choose to walk in sin. We have to choose it. 
Okay, now it's a default setting. It's easy to choose it. It's harder to choose away from it. But the outcome is death. And death comes back on us. That's the way that works. When we choose it, it affects us. Then we have our heart. Where's our heart? Our heart is the connection between the spirit and the soul, where the attributes of God are, are living. So the things of the spirit are supposed to come into our soul. That's the way it's supposed to be. But we have a condition known as hardness of heart. It comes from wounds and choices. When we get wounded, we harden our heart to the person who hurt us. Um, when we make choose sin, we harden our heart to the Holy Spirit, and we keep. Well, what happens when we have hardness of heart? Well, the things of the spirit can't make it into my soul, and same time, I cannot see who I am in my spirit. So my identity is completely messed up. Now we've gone over this chart so many, many times right to this point and we've seen this this has been great but let's concentrate now on just this section of it just a section of choosing sin and death and how it comes back on us well that means by choice we walk into the death and the death affects us now that's heavy how much does it affect us? So much so that we tuned our souls to that death. And therefore, our souls affect others. Our will hurts other people. Our emotions damage other people. Our mind damages other people. This whole idea that when we choose sin, we tune ourselves to the, the energy force of sin and that tunes our souls and our soul is made to respond to other people, uh, to touch other people. We do. We touch them with our sin. We touch them with the world. We touch them with the damage. We affect them with the frequencies of sin that we chose to come on us. That's heavy. Now our whole spirit is positively tuned to the positive realm, totally. That's the way it is. However, because of our choice of sin, and we have our kidneys, okay, our kidneys were there to keep the sin, to filter out the sin, so that we are not affected by it. But if we choose the death, what happens is that death comes on us in a mighty way and it kills our kidneys or it just it keeps them ineffective. So we can't do what we're supposed to do. What that does is it releases our, our sin. It tunes us to the wrong realm so that our sin affects how I think, it affects how I want, it affects what I choose or what I, want, I, I feel. It affects my emotions. Well, that's heavy duty. If my sin within me is in compliance with the death that I've chosen and it's affecting my mind, will, and emotions, wow, the defilement that is in me, that is in every part where I have a hardness of heart, now it comes back and it feeds back. I get sickness, disease, and mental dysfunction. That's absolutely true. But this is the flesh. This is what the flesh is. This is darkness. This is what darkness is. It's, it's all this working inside me. And I have the Holy Spirit in me. Lust. Flesh, darkness, and lust is in me. And of course, what happens is it affects out. You want to see that again? It affects out. One more time. It affects out. We have got to know that what we are doing affects those around us because of our bad choices. Absolutely amazing. So let's hit some of these scriptures that talk about this bad levels of energy, the, the negative energy forces. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 3 says, And brothers, we entreat you by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, for you not to be quickly shaken in the mind, nor to be disturbed, neither through a little spirit, nor through a speech, nor through letter, as through us, as if the day of Christ has come. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, because that day will not come unless first comes the falling away. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of per perdition. Now, I'm going to get in trouble here, and that's okay. I like it. Um, I do not believe in a pre-trib rapture. And people who do are saying, oh man, it's going to be imminent. It's any time now. No. Did you not listen to what that says? It says, I don't want you to understand, not through letter, speech, or anything, that the day of Christ has come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, because that day will not come unless first comes the falling away and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition two things have got to happen there's got to be a falling away that's the apostasy 
and that the man of sin is revealed. The son of perdition. We have to see, know who the Antichrist is. Do we know who the Antichrist is? No. So is Christ coming? No. Has there been a falling away? Some. But there will be a time when it's going to be really heavy per, um, persecution. The body of Christ will be separated into the black and the white. And no more gray areas. We're going to be finding this out coming real soon. And it's going to be diminished. There will be a remnant. There will be those who are falling away. The apostasy. And when that happens, we'll know. And then the Antichrist is shown to be who he is. Then, then we'll be able to do it. That's all good. Let's talk about that Antichrist person, the one opposing and exalting himself over everything being called God. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 through 6. Next, next verses. The one opposing and exalting himself over everything being called God or object of worship. So as for him to sit in the temple of God as God, setting him forth himself that he is God. Do you not remember that I told you these things, I yet being with you? And now you know the thing holding back for him to be revealed in this time. No rapture before the apostasy. And the Antichrist is revealed. This is of utmost importance. And then verses 7 and 8, it says, For the mystery of lawlessness already is working. Guys, this is ha happening already. Only he is holding back now until it comes out of the midst. And then the lawlessness will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume by the spirit of his mouth, and will bring to naught by the brightness of his presence. What? Well, this is what we need to know, is that the mystery of lawlessness is already is energized. He's already functioning. Only he is holding back now until it comes out of the midst. Okay, there's a holding back. Even the Antichrist is holding himself back. He's, until it comes time, it'll all be revealed. Okay, that's amazing. And what's going to happen? Well, eventually the Lord's going to consume him with his mouth. Okay? Consume him by the spirit of his mouth. It says that there's a sword that'll come out of the, the mouth of the Lord, destroy the nations. And I mean, this is heavy duty stuff. Okay? But you understand, the mystery of lawlessness has been energized. There's an energy field. There's an energy understanding. This, this darkness, this negativity is already energized and working. That's heavy. Lawlessness is fully functional right now on this planet. The Holy Spirit isn't leaving. Now, I'd heard this when I was growing up. It's the, the Holy Spirit is going to be taken away and with all the Christians, and then will be the end of time. No. No time is the Holy Spirit going to be taken away. He isn't leaving. He's not the one hold, that's going to be leaving. He will quit holding back and he's going to let things happen. And that's going to be a, a vile, horrible time. It's not like this pandemic. Everybody says this must be the end times. Guys, read the book. It's going to be a lot worse than this thing ever was. This isn't the end. Yet. End will happen. There's a great work happening right now. There's great good. There's a lot of people getting born again. Great things happening in churches. And there's great evil. There's never been sex trafficking like there is now. There's never been slave trading like there is right now. This is it's, it's happening all around the world. We just we're ignorant of it. But the Holy Spirit is restraining some things even right now. But when he releases the restraint, things are going to happen. But the church will be made much more coherent. We are going to gel together. We're going to understand there won't be the divisions. We won't be all separated. We're going to be walking together and loving each other and walking as Christians are supposed to. The falling away must happen. Second Thessalonians 2, 9 and 10, it says this about the Antichrist. His coming is according to the energizing of Satan in all power and miraculous signs and lying wonders and in all deceit of unrighteousness in those being lost because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be saved. Wow. The energizing of Satan. You don't think there's a negative energy force out there? Uh, there is. And Satan is empowering this thing, energizing it, being in it, empowering things by sin and death. It's, it's really amazing. Now he's going to be starting to do signs and wonders. We had better, as the body of Christ, be able to know what the signs and wonders are. Okay, These negative energy workings, those who receive it. Our signs and wonders being twisted, deceiving. The things that we should be really good at He's going to be using those who by faith tune themselves to that evil. 
Okay? By faith, turn themselves to evil. We better be careful because there's going to be lying signs and wonders. Okay? And it's going to happen. We better know the difference and we better be able to function in the difference. Verses 11 and 12 says this, And because of this, God will send them an energizing of error. Talk about a negative energy force. God is going to send them an energizing of error for them to believe the lie. But all may be judged, those not believing the truth, but have delighted in unrighteousness. That's heavy. God is going to determine what's going to be going on here. He's going to, going to help. He's going to be involved in this. He is giving them what their faith has tuned them to. Now, he's not going to go against their will. He's actually giving them what they want. That's what they want. They want the energizing of negativity. Okay? The negative energy is already working. It is. It's right here. Just It's happening. We need to know it and be aware of its working. We need to... It's going to get a whole bunch worse. And if we are not those of the discernment, those who are seeing and understanding how these things work, we will be trapped in it and messed up by it just like everybody else. We need to be aware of its working. Things are going to get a lot, lot worse. God is giving them what they want so He can bring the end about. He's still working in us. He's going to be bringing signs and wonders in us. There will be a showdown of signs and wonders, just like Moses did. Um, back then with the prophets, okay, in, um, and all the priests and everything in the court of Egypt. There will be showdowns. There really will be. It's a showdown of sorts that is coming. We have got to be more functional than ever before. Now is the time to understand and use the principles of God the way they're supposed to be. Now Romans 7, 4 through 5 says this, So that, my brothers, you also were made dead to the law through the body of Christ, for you to become another's, to the one raised from the dead, so that you we may bear fruit to God. That makes sense. For when we are in the flesh, the passions of sin were energizing in our members through the law for the bearing of fruit unto death. What? The passion of sin were energized in our members? <laughs> yes. Don't you remember that? Sure you do. Okay? And it, what did it do? Bear fruit unto death. We know what it is like for negative energy to work. We've been in it. We've seen it. We've done it. We have done it. Or still do it. Okay? We're seeing how this thing works. Very, very impressive. Then verse 6. But now we have been set free from the law having died to that which we were held, so as for us to serve in newness of spirit and not in oldness of letter. We died to what held us in that negative energy field. We died to that. How cool. We have been given access to the positive realm of the spirit. And so, therefore, we can serve in a completely different way. All relationship with no religion. Therefore, total life. That's what we get. That's what we're heading for. That is just too amazing. Let's jump over to Ephesians chapter 2 where it says, And you being dead in deviations and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the ruler of the authority of the air, the spirit now energizing in the sons of disobedience. What? Remember what we used to walk in? Among whom also we also conducted ourselves in times past in the lusts of our flesh, doing the things willed of the flesh and of the understanding, and were by nature the children of wrath even as the rest. Okay? Wow. This is amazing. It says, we used to walk under this whole thing where is the Spirit now, who is now energizing in the sons of disobedience. We know what it's like. We've been there. We've done that. This is heavy. Very, very heavy. It goes on and it says, but God. Oh, I love that. But God being rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even we being dead in deviations, He made us alive together with Christ. By grace you are being saved and raised us up together and seated us together in the heavenly realms in Christ. We are energized beyond belief. This is all true about us. Okay, He loved us. He made us alive with Christ. He sat us in the heavenly realms together. This is amazing. Such available power and energy in us. We should have all of this going and functioning 
even though all the other negative stuff is around and functioning. We should be better at that. Then verse 7 through 10 says this, that he might demonstrate in the ages coming on the great riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works. But not anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ unto good works. See, he's energizing us to do good works which God had prepared that we should walk in them. God has a plan for us. But he wouldn't tell us to do something that he wouldn't empower us to do. So, we're his workmanship. His workmanship is his energy fields working and energizing in us. That is stunning. Now, when I go into the things of the of the, the salvation, cool. It's good things. It's the power. It's the presence of God. I can go into the things of God and it can affect me to be things like godly. I can also walk in a defilement of sin and junk and crud and what will it do? It will affect me to become like it. This is our standard. This is the norm. Is that whatever we walk into is what we become. It what affects us. What makes it so we can work outside of it. This is why we have got to walk more in the things of the Spirit than we've ever had before. Can't play, play in it. We can't patty cake with the evil and the sin and the destruction. We have got to walk in the salvation, in the things of the Spirit so it affects us out. Otherwise, we're going to be affected by the other. We live in a fallen world. We do. We really do. Unbelievers live in a fallen state, a fallen existence. That's true. They, they live in a fallen state. It's their way, their, their full function. But we live in a brand new creation. We live in a redeemed state. So we are so different. We are no longer strictly human. We are a redeemed being. We are completely changed. And we can be affected by the negative energy fields, but we don't have to be. That's the beauty. Okay? We don't have to be affected, even though we can be. We can choose to walk in life and light. We must be aware, totally aware, of the death, the darkness that's around us. Man, we have got to turn our, our discernment up to a way that never have before. Continually walking in choice and consequence of what's going on around us. We have got to walk in these things. Death and darkness, mm -hmm. every time we choose it, there are consequences. Life and light, oh yeah, when we choose it, there are also consequences. They're good. Oh, not all consequences are bad. They're going to be good ones. Okay, And that's what we are walking. We have got to choose these things. It's time to lift up our heads. Time to look up and see what's happening around us. Stop the negativity and unbelief. We've got to stop it. Okay? We've got to be looking around for the real energy, the real power of the things of God, the positive, beautiful, glorious things that God has for us. See how much He wants to use you. Way more than you've ever seen possible. End of discussion today. This is a, a reality, guys. We have got to start seeing the negative energy fields around us, the, the negative things that we could walk into. Uh, you sit down, jump on the computer, and you start looking at stupid stuff. Yeah, it's going to affect you. It comes right off of it, goes inside you, tunes you to it, and it comes out of you. That's the way it works. That's life. That's the way it works. We've got to know. There's so much more, so much more that we need to be walking into. And so we've got to be aware of the junk. We've got to be looking for the good. And all this stuff is true in us. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you have shown us that there are negative energy fields and there are things that are out there that are damaging and hurtful and that we can be affected by them. But Lord, not when we're walking with you. I walk into a room and affect a change. I can walk into a place where there's total darkness and be the light and effectively change what's around. I don't have to be afraid of what's attacking me, but I can be totally confident that what is happening in me and out through me is what's affecting things around. 
And Lord, I just give you praise for it. I thank you for all you're doing in that. Lord, teach us, show us, help us. Help us walk in this. And for this, we'll all give you the glory in every way in Jesus' precious name. Amen.